If you thought your smartphone choices were limited to Samsung and Apple, think again. Chinese upstart OnePlus aims to change everything you know about smartphones, and they think they can do it with a brand new OnePlus One. As this is the company's flagship device, we know that they are hoping to make a splash in the smartphone world. Even their philosophy, never settle, sounds promising. So let's get the OnePlus One on our teardown table and see if they can deliver. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we find out what one plus one equals on our repairability scale. Unimpressed with the current designs on the market, OnePlus set out to, according to them, make a phone that was just as beautiful as it was powerful. And the results of that quest were the brand new OnePlus One. Designed and assembled in China, the One is powered by a custom version of Android called Cyanogen Mod 11S, an open source operating system for smartphones, and it's only the second smartphone on the market to use it. The OnePlus One measures in at 152.9 millimeters by 75.9 millimeters and is 8.9 millimeters at its thickest and weighs in at 162 grams. This is a big phone, so if you're like me, plan on using both hands. With the help of this cute SIM eject tool thoughtfully provided by OnePlus, we take the SIM card out and get to work on removing the back plate. Fortunately for us, it's only secured in place by a few clips, just a simple opening tool needed. Opening doesn't get much better than this. With our first look inside the device, we see the eye-catching bright red battery and not much else. To see anything else, we're gonna have to dig in further. So first up, we're gonna work on the battery. After such an easy opening, we were disappointed to find the battery connector is located underneath a screwed in panel. But not only is OnePlus trying to hide the battery connector from us, they're also trying to hide the screws themselves. Rubber stoppers and stickers covered the majority of screws holding the interior cover in place. With the internal cover finally off the phone, we're able to remove the battery. This bright power source reveals itself to be 3.8 volt, 3100 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery that fares well when compared to other recent Android devices, such as the Galaxy S5, which came in at 2800 milliamp hours, and the HTC One M8, which came in at 2600 milliamp hours. With the battery finally removed, we set to work on getting the motherboard out. After disconnecting several connectors, including a tricky antenna connected underneath, we get a closer look at all the chips on the board. On the front, and the largest chip you'll see, is the three gigabytes of Samsung LP DDR3 RAM, and likely stacked underneath is 2.5 gigahertz quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 801. On the other side, you'll find the Toshiba-made eMMC 5.0 onboard storage, of which our phone had 64 gigabytes, and another Qualcomm chip handling both the OnePlus One's 802.11ac Wi-Fi and its Bluetooth 4.0 connectivity. Before moving on to the display, we turn our attention to the front panel assembly and find a speaker assembly and USB port that are relatively easy to remove from the phone. And after we remove a few ribbon cables, we check out the various components that call the daughter board home, such as the vibrators, a few LED lights for the front panel assembly capacitive buttons, and the primary microphone of which this phone has a total of three. The three microphones work together to isolate and enhance your voice and filter out background noise. Finally, we take a good hard look at the display. Getting the display assembly free from the midframe was not the hardest attachment we've ever done, but it wasn't much fun either. The display was fused to the midframe, so we had to enlist the help of our eye opener and opening picks to finally free it. This is a 5.5 IPS display that has a resolution of 920 by 1080 and a pixel density of 401 pixels per inch. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The one plus one got a five out of 10. And here's why. On the upside, there's no proprietary screws and fairly modular components will allow for less expensive replacement parts. But on the downside, with its connector trapped under a plastic panel and several screws, the battery is more of a chore to replace than we'd like. And finally, the LCD and digitizer glass are fused together and must be replaced as a single part. And that's our teardown. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.